Recently, I worked with a client who wanted to sell her property that she had bought over 10 years ago. She had lived there for nine years, and just last year she had converted her property to a rental. Naturally, she wanted to avoid paying taxes, and she was aware that she could exclude from her taxable income up to $250,000 as a single person. So I asked if she had considered exchanging under Section 1031 her current property to a new investment property, thereby reducing her tax liability to zero. This prompted her to ask, can we do both? Under Section 121 of the Internal Revenue Code, a single person can sell their home that was held and used as a primary residence for at least two of the last five years and take $250,000 in gains off the table, put it into their bank account, and not pay a dime in state or federal taxes. Now this exclusion goes up to $500,000 for a married couple filling out a joint income tax return. Not bad, but this exclusion may only be a drop in the bucket in many Silicon Valley neighborhoods where properties may have appreciated well over a million dollars. Anything above that exclusion will be taxed as long-term capital gains. Section 1031 of the Internal Revenue Code is commonly used by real estate investors. The 1031 Tax Deferred Exchange is a way for owners to sell their investment property, purchase another of equal or higher value, and then defer any capital gains tax. The concept is, since the gains were never recognized by the owner and were instead just transferred into a new investment property, they shouldn't have to pay any tax on the capital gains. There's no limit to the number of times an investment property can be exchanged or rolled into a new investment property. For my client in Redwood City, there's a huge opportunity to combine these two benefits and avoid any current tax liability for this transaction. To illustrate the savings, let's say my client bought her home for $500,000 10 years ago and that it's now worth $2.5 million. In a typical sale, my client will yield $2 million in capital gains. Since she has lived there two of the last five years, she can exclude $250,000 as a single person, but she will have to pay tax on the remaining $1.75 million. With a top bracket of capital gains for California residents at 37.1%, my client will have to pay $649,250 in taxes to the federal and state government. Alternatively, if she chooses to exchange her property, she can still take $250,000 in gain tax-free under a Section 121 and invest the remaining $1.75 million in one or multiple investment properties, deferring all capital gains taxes. So how can the same property be simultaneously treated as a primary residence in which capital gains can be excluded while also treated as an investment property in which capital gains can be deferred? Fortunately, the IRS has issued Revenue Procedure 2005-14 to clarify exactly this scenario in which you move out of your primary residence, convert it into investment property, then exchange that property. The Internal Revenue Code does not explicitly state how long you must hold the investment property before it can be exchanged, so I recommend you consult your tax professional. In the end, it's not about how much your home sells for, but it's about how much you can keep. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to follow us and leave us a comment below, and we'll continue to bring valuable content.